Coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri tonight in the 141st Annual Meetings of the National Rifle Association. Uh, those of you watching online, you can now see what I was talking about. This is a Thursday. The exhibit hall is not even open. And there were well over 1,000 people just when I was here this afternoon. So I don't know how many people uh, rolled through the uh, registration in the four hours that it was open. But, man, it was a busy, busy Thursday. And I am pleased to have with us on the program right now the Coalition of the Oppressed, uh, Mr. Tom King from the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association. How are you doing tonight, Tom? Very good, Cam. It's great to be here in St. Louis with you. Well, it's good to see you once again. Uh, Scott Bach from the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Club. Scott, thanks for coming on the show tonight. Great to be back, Cam. And uh, Jim Wallace from the Gun Owners Action League. Hey, Jim. How are you doing, sir? Psyched to be here. I've been I'm looking forward to St. Louis. 70,000 people that think like me, and my wife is scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so i got to ask you guys, because you've, you've been to, I mean, I've been to eight, this is my eighth NRA annual meeting. Um, you've been to, 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 to many more. I don't remember seeing a Thursday this busy. I mean, like last year in Pittsburgh no. was busy. It was a busy Thursday, but there was a ton of activity yeah. here this afternoon. A ton yeah. of activity, and, you know, there, there, there are more things going on as well. Right. You know, and, and as the uh, annual meeting evolves and gets a little bit bigger and bigger, and I think it's going to draw more and more people, and they come here earlier. You know, I mean, people save vacations to do this. Yeah. You know, I mean, and that's just amazing. I know. One of these years, I'm actually going to take vacation so I can go wander the aisles of the <laughs> annual meeting. <laughs> I was going to say, come to the annual meeting. E exactly. Yeah, because, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm here, but... Man, it's, you know, well, it's busy. It's 2012. I mean, it's a huge year. People are amped up. We noticed in the hotel, usually it doesn't start to buzz until Friday, and yeah. the hotel was buzzing last night. Yeah. So, oh, really? Um, last yes, night? Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. All of yeah. a sudden, there was a surge of people that came in last night, and we all looked at each other and said, wow, this is going to be big. We, I mean, we're expecting to break a record this time. I Scott couldn't get closer than two or three to the bar. <laughs> <laughs> And so it begins, and ladies and so gentlemen. It begins. <laughs> and now, so if it you begins. ever take a vacation, Kim, we can interview you, and Scott can play the part of Howard Cosell, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, look, I mean, that is a great sign, and I really do hope that we break a record. The last time the NRA was here in St. Louis, uh, it was a record breaker for the NRA annual meeting. It was also a record breaker for the city of St. Louis. It was the biggest convention that the city of St. Louis has ever hosted, sixty-four thousand, uh, roughly, I think, in two thousand and seven. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's, let's break that record. Big. Let's break it. And this week they have what? They have the Cardinals opener. They have the, yeah. uh, Cardinals uh, the Cubs. Blues. Yeah, the hockey team has a championship game or a playoff game. Yep. And is there also some kind of marathon or so? There's a race somewhere? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. The only time I run is when something's chasing me. So <laughs> I, I really don't know. I couldn't tell you about marathons or anything. But, but yeah, the, the Blues were playing uh, well, tonight. My running days are over. That's why I carry a gun. <laughs> <laughs> the Blues are playing tonight. The home opener, Cards-Cubs, yeah. is tomorrow. And I was – I was so excited, guys, because, you know, I, I, I thought I get one night off. You're not a Cubs fan. Oh, Glenn, I thought uh, no, you were no, going to no, say I'm, you're a Cubs fan. I'm just a baseball fan, but I get one <laughs> night off at the annual meetings, and it's Friday night. And I thought, oh, great, I can go to the home opener. No, it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> so I won't be going to the baseball game. But I got to tell you, Jim Edmonds of the uh, St. Louis Cardinals, uh, he's got a steakhouse, uh, Jim Edmonds 15 Steakhouse. And he, I, just, just, I want to pass that around to you guys. Take a look at that. He's offering gift cards to NRA members, and he's highlighting the fact that they are CCW friendly. Nice. Come love in nice. and, and, you know, and have I dinner with it. us. You could shoot your own steer. Absolutely. You know, huge supporters <laughs> of the NRA. You know, that's the first time yeah. that I've seen something like that. Uh, in nice. Pittsburgh last year, the hospitality was great. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so many restaurants downtown were opening their doors, and they had signs up saying, welcome in array. I've seen a lot of that down here in uh, downtown St. Louis as well, but... Oh, look at that. Look at that. Jim Wallace is like, well, I know where I'm going to have dinner tomorrow night. Yeah. Just take that. Uh, That'll little, cost you, Jim. Just take that coupon gift card right there. Uh, yeah, um, Mayor Bloomberg is going to do that in New York City as well. Oh, yeah. Welcome gonna, to concealed carry people. Sure. Yeah. 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 Water, water guns only. Yeah. 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 yeah you get no, the, they're outlawed. It's too. the greatest right. restaurant. Actually, with, with, with bars. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. Bloomberg gives you a gift card for three hots and a cot. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. is uh, that, that's, that's a Bloomberg gift card. Yeah. Let's talk about Michael Bloomberg for a minute if we can, Tom King. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. See, we're all having such a good time. <laughs> yeah. I know. Yeah, here we you go. notice oh. us come down all of a sudden? I know. <laughs> I'm sorry. I hate to be a downer. Uh, we're going we're gonna to have a great weekend, but let's just get this out of the way right Cam, now. Cam, I just okay. lost my appetite. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you know, I saw something uh, earlier this week, and Bloomberg's been on a tear uh, this week. He's been going after Stand Your Ground. But earlier in the week, he went after, and he didn't, he didn't offer really any 
uh, tangible solutions. But, you know, there were four New York police officers who were shot by a violent repeat felon, a guy who had done two stints in prison on attempted murder charges. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, The guns that were found, one of them was stolen, one of them was defaced, apparently one of them was uh, sold as part of a straw purchase. This guy is not allowed to possess a single gun. He didn't get these guns legally. Mm -hmm. And yet Bloomberg says that we need more gun control laws as a result of this. Well, you know, that's been a standard mantra for, you know, for the past four or five years. And, you know, and in response to that, I can say one thing, you know, Mayor Bloomberg, clean up your old ho- your own house. You know, there were a, a number of New York City police officers who in- were indicted for gun running just recently, mm-hmm. you know, and well, of course, if you if you have uh, all these guns coming into the city illegally and you're, it's your people in your police department that are bringing them in, you know, it's, it's easy to do. And, and I'm not trying to, to, to uh, cast aspersions at, at, at police officers, okay? Mm-hmm. There's good and bad people everywhere, you know, but, but check your people. Make sure that they're, they're doing what's supposed to be, what is supposed to be done, you know. And, and one of the other attacks that, that he made, he, you know, he, uh, he sent out a press release saying that, do you know that in 2010 the NRA spent $270,000 lobbying in New York State? And it was phrased just like that, okay? However, however, what, what he neglected to mention was that in 2010, Mayors Against Illegal Guns spent $365,000 on, on lobbying expenses, you know, in New York State, you know? And he's, he's just a hypocrite. He is a hypocrite. Yeah. And, and, and Scott, you know, when I hear this uh, from Bloomberg, uh, he leaves out all of the facts that are inconvenient to his narrative. You know, one of the things that uh, this guy who, who attacked the uh, New York police officers ha- had in his past, uh, as I mentioned, he had two attempted murder convictions. The first time, he served two years. Mm-hmm. Two years for attempted murder. The second time, I think it was attempted murder and armed robbery. He served less than 10 years, but he had time tacked on because he was caught selling drugs in prison. See, here's my question for Mayor Bloomberg. If this guy was selling illegal drugs, somehow obtained illegal drugs in a secure facility like a New York prison. What laws, and again, there are laws against selling drugs, there are laws against possessing drugs, certainly laws against, you know, uh, getting drugs into a prison. What would our society look like if we were to, have, if we were to pass the types of laws that would be needed to prevent a guy like this from stealing a firearm. I mean, I can't imagine. You're, you're talking an Orwellian existence here. Hey, Cam, they don't exist. There aren't any laws that will stop someone that is bent on criminal behavior from engaging in criminal behavior. But will, what will happen in that scenario is law-abiding citizens will be disarmed. And that's really the aim of it. We, I mean, we've seen this kind of thing in New Jersey. Mayors that can't get their own act together, mm-hmm. okay, to, in order to deflect attention from themselves, have to blame the good guys. They need a scapegoat, and the gun is a convenient scapegoat, and honest gun owners are, are a convenient scapegoat. But this is old, tired rhetoric. The people are not so naive anymore. They get it, okay? They take it for what it is, and, you know, truth has um, a resonance with people, and they don't, they're not buying it anymore. Right. And, um, you know, you can have all the, there's really only, this comes up in the New Jersey legislature all the time, there's really only one law that's needed, and that is you commit a violent crime with a gun, we lock you up and throw away the key, period, end of story. This whole notion of demonizing the tool is just, it's a subterfuge. Yeah. And uh, so it's um, no more traction on that. We get it. We see right through it, and Bloomberg can, you know, spout off all he wants but he's not going to get his way. Yeah, yeah. Now, what about uh, Jim Wallace in Massachusetts right now? I mean, it's not like Governor Deval Patrick has been uh, the gun owner's best friend. In fact, you're still waiting to meet with the governor, aren't you? Been five years. Been trying to meet with him ever since. Five so years five you've been years waiting. We've been, we've been waiting to meet with the governor. So it, it's kind of interesting because, um, you, you know, there's, there's a lot of things going on. Obviously, we had a bill in uh, Massachusetts, which still have a bill in there. Uh, it's called our Common Defense Bill, Senate 661. And basically would give you the right to defend yourself or others any place you had the right to be. And the, the second part of the bill is also so that an attacker could not sue you civilly or their estate could not sue you if they were somehow killed in a defensive action. Uh, that bill has come under attack, obviously, because of the Florida incident. But ironically, uh, we've started to already change the tide in that discussion because 
what we are now saying after the first week, it was pretty well hammered. But now what's happening because of all of the things that the, the media has done to lie about what happened in Martin Zimmerman, to fabricate evidence about what happened in Martin Zimmerman, is actually giving us the opportunity to say now more than ever, we have all the proof we need that citizens, lawful citizens, absolutely must be given these protections because look at what happened in Florida even with the limited protections that he had. Now, we don't know what happened. You know, maybe Zimmerman will be guilty of something. We just simply don't know. But what we do know is that a, law, is that a, a person without the evidence, without the chance to present their case, was already tried and convicted in the, in the public court of opinion mm -hmm. with manufactured evidence. That in itself should give everyone in this country the – the means and the desire to support legislation like the Common Defense Bill. Talking with uh, the Coalition of the Oppressed, Tom King from the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association, Scott Bog with the Association of New Jersey Rifle and Pistol Clubs, and uh, Jim Wallace from the Gun Owners Action League in Massachusetts. And, and uh, I'll, I'll throw this out to, uh, to anybody who wants to answer at this point. But uh, uh, You know that's a scary move when I, we're on the show. I know. Okay. I know. <laughs> All right. I'm just... You're testing the waters again. You a wing and a prayer. First. Just, a, just a wing and a prayer. Is there, yeah, buzzer? Buzzer? You know, <laughs> that's right. You know what? The next time you guys are in studio, yeah. we figured yeah. this out. I, yeah. I like that yeah, idea. Yeah. I really do. Cam and Company, sponsored by Staples. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get you guys some easy buttons. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Uh, you know, it would be, be wonderful, by the way, if you guys could yeah. hit the easy button and get uh, you know good gun laws. Could I duct tape that up my governor's head? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so, so I want to ask you, I mean, and, and I guess, Jim, you may be disqualified uh, okay. from this question because we were just talking about the uh, the piece of legislation that you have right now in Massachusetts that uh, you're working on. But uh, 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 Tom and, and Scott, if there was one, just one, uh, bill that you could shepherd through the legislature right now in New Jersey or New York State, given all of the challenges that you all face, I realize this is kind of a uh, a tough question here, but... What's the first thing? What's the next thing that you all need in, in your states right now for gun owners? My, my wish, actually, it would be one of two bills. The, the, the first would be universal shell issue, uh, concealed carry permits throughout the state. My second is uh, a piece of legislation that's been, uh, that's been introduced that would divide New York State at the Tappan Zee Bridge and, and make it <laughs> New, York's, New York State and West New York. That, that might be my first one. Okay, so you'd have the, the New, York, New York City slash state yes. and then the rest of New York The state. rest of New York. Uh -huh. Yeah, actually, I, I thought they were the, – the talk has been, you know, like New York and West New York, okay? And I, I always thought that it would be New York and free New York. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I got to tell you, the only thing that bothers me about that is the idea of Manhattan getting two U.S. senators. That's the only thing oh, that, uh, that, that that frightens me. But then again, I guess you could look at uh, who you guys have now. And <laughs> well, yeah, we'll, we'll send Jill and Jill and Brand Jill, Brand Jill Brand and, and, and Schumer can can go to New York. We'll find some new guys upstate. <laughs> what about what about you, Scott? I know in New Jersey, you all are challenging the one gun a month law. You're challenging New Jersey's. Uh, uh, I mean, really, almost no issue uh, a permitting system. Um, what would you What would you like to take well, off first? Well, I mean, our goal is to restore the Second Amendment in New Jersey as fully as possible, as fast as possible. Mm. The way New Jersey works is everything about guns is banned except where the state allows it. So, if we had one thing to attack, it would be that structure. That is a pre Heller and McDonald structure that basically says you own guns at the pleasure of the state. That's got to go. We have plans to take it down. But if you take that down, whole swaths of gun law will collapse, and that's exactly what we intend to do. So collapse that structure. Instead, it should be the other way around. It should be permissive. Okay, everything about guns is, is legal except where, you know, the Heller standard, sensitive places, et cetera. Right. So just flip, invert that and flip it around. Are, are you guys uh, excited by what we saw in Maryland not too long ago? Oh, a the federal Willard judge. Case. Yeah, yeah. A, a it's saying. huge. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's huge. It's the first look. It seems like there is a there has been a cabal of judges that have decided that they're going to try to undermine Heller and McDonald mm. by simply saying because the facts of Heller and McDonald involved somebody inside their home. What that means is the Second Amendment doesn't exist outside the home. And, and th those have been the decisions until this Woolard case and a case that followed it on um, the same week in West Virginia, where I think, I, I think the judge in West Virginia said something like, um, you know, states that, uh, that say the Second Amendment doesn't exist outside the home, judges that say that, mm -hmm. it says more about the judges themselves than about the Second Amendment. 
I've always thought, I mean, I really, ever since Heller, I thought that was a, a, a cop-out for these judges because that wasn't an issue at Heller. The Supreme Court wasn't examining the issue of whether or not uh, the, the right uh, to keep and bear arms exists outside of the home. And, and, yep. you, and you watch because if, depending upon how this Martin Zimmerman issue goes, those judges will use that incident as a reason to rule against self-defense outside the home. But, but look, here's the thing. All those bad rulings kept popping up miraculously like weeds in different parts of the country as if coordinated. Could you right. possibly imagine that? Right. And that's exactly you know, what I believe has happened. I, I think there are a bunch of judges who have said, and, and by the way, the, the, I don't want to get political here, but there are a whole really? bunch of Clinton-era judges that are still stacking the courts. And ironically, out of all those Clinton-era <laughs> judges, we're getting these decisions. It's, it's like a coordinated effort. And this is the first thing that broke through, and I predict that's where we're going with this. I mean, but probably by the end of 2013, we're going to see the carry issue before the United States Supreme Court. Um, it could be resolved in 2013 or early 2014, and it's it's a critical time. Absolutely. And, you know, you talk about these judges that are still around from the uh, Clinton administration, and that's something that, you know, we're I think every gun owner should have on their mind, not just the potential uh, vacancies on a, a Supreme Court in a uh, second term for President Obama, but all of the district judges, all of the appellate nominations that uh, the next president will get to, to have. Prosecutors. Absolutely. The whole and, justice system. Well, one of the problems we're facing in Massachusetts with our Supreme Judicial Court is we have had at least two rulings come down from them uh, actually with factually incorrect statements about Massachusetts law. What they said in their opinion doesn't even exist in Massachusetts law. They cited, and it wasn't just an opinion of, oh, we now. think this and that. Yeah, no, <laughs> but it, it, those laws were actually done away with 20 years ago. They don't exist. So how do you deal with that? The second thing is our Supreme Judicial Court and our Attorney General still hold that because Heller, neither Heller nor McDonald, specifically overturned Cruikshank, that Cruikshank remains the law of the land in Massachusetts. The liberal bastion of Massachusetts, Cruikshank, a case where the, the U.S. Supreme Court protected the Klan, still holds that that case from 1876 is the, is the law of the land in Massachusetts. I, I have some advice for, for uh, localities that are electing judges. And this is some things that we have discovered in New York. Um, if you ask most judges where they stand on the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. they, uh, the, the, the stock answer that you get is, because of my judicial position, I can't talk about my beliefs, okay? That's hogwash, okay? What, what we have found is, is that if you ask a judge where his position is on the Second Amendment, and he, in fact, tells you that, he is anti-gun, and that's the way he's going to make decisions because we have a, a, a number, a, a, a lot of pro-gun judges in New York who have, when approached by the New York State Rifle and Pistol Association on the positions, have flatly stated that we are pro-gun, we will issue pistol permits, blah, 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 blah. And they have, when they've been elected, they've kept to their words. The only ones that that we weren't surprised by because we knew what it was going to be were the mm -hmm. judges who refused to answer, you know, and, and they convince the electorate that they can't talk about it, but they'll say, oh, no, we're pro-gun, but we, you know, we can't talk about what we feel about uh, concealed carry or any of the other issues that are important to us. The people have to understand that they, they have to become more educated voters, look at the NRA ratings, look at Rifle and Pistol Association ratings, trust us because we're doing our homework, and, and that needs to be done. And i got to say one more thing, too, about... Tom talked about you know the, the ratings and so forth, whether it's my organization, Scott, Tom's, or even the NRA. But one of the things you have to realize is when we grade incumbent legislators, mm -hmm. it's based on what they have done. Mm. Anybody can come along and fill out a questionnaire and say anything they want. Right. But if they're not a proven entity, and we've had that happen to us before, perfect you know, questionnaire, and as soon as they get in office, they didn't sign a contract with you. So be very leery about people that you don't know who are coming forward saying, oh, I'm 100% with the Second Amendment, this and that. You know, not to quote a, uh, a Supreme Court justice that just got in who said Second Amendment is settled law. Of course, she didn't say how it was settled, right. but... You know, yeah, so and then she helped uh, write a very unsettling uh, decision in the yes. minority opinion in the uh, in the McDonald case, and and you know I think I think you're right. I mean, this is why uh, NRA's political victory fund uh, when they grade 
uh, people who don't have a, a record, you get the AQ or you know BQ, right. and that the Q stands for qualified, yep. meaning we don't have a record. Right. We only have their word. So we've know. actually been doing this for almost ten years. What we do now is, uh, ten years ago was. We give incumbents letter grades, mm-hmm. and we give potential candidates who fill out a questionnaire a percentage grade, so you know oh. right away. So a percentage grade is based on what they've answered. A letter grade is based on what they've done. Interesting. All right. So, well, listen, gentlemen, I could talk to you for another 20 minutes or so, but uh, who knows what would happen. Uh, you've been on your <laughs> best behavior tonight, Jim Wallace. I, I really, gold star for, for Jim Wallace this That's evening. It's only because my wife's here. <laughs> is that the trick? Yeah. Oh. Well, then you need to come down to D.C. during the uh, board (laughs) meetings next time. Hey, uh, Jim, thank you so much, sir, for coming on the program tonight. Scott, Tom, it's always a real pleasure. And uh, most importantly, have a great time here at the NRA annual meetings. Yeah, There is a a word that I I would like to leave everybody with. No Obama. No Obama. No Obama. But we should also tell you, listeners, that Scott, Tom, and I will be here from 9-0 to 902 tomorrow to sign autographs. So oh, fantastic. <laughs> Excellent. And, and I, I think there may even be like a karaoke bar at one of the uh, yeah, local yeah. casinos down yeah. the and street Scott here. Scott sings. Jim, and Jim will be paying to give autographs. <laughs> 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 the Coalition of the Oppressed, Tom King, Scott Bach, and Jim Wallace join us here tonight on Cam and Company.